Hey friends, I hope you're doing great. I wanna share with you something that's really burning on my heart. I feel like we are embarking on a new renaissance in the creative arts. I don't think I need to be a prophetic person to see that that is happening. And it is a word, it's, 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 a, it's a phrase that's being thrown around at the moment by a lot of prophetic people. And we're kind of bouncing off each other. I think I said something in a, an Instagram live about um, a new renaissance that was coming and Vicki Simpson, my friend, shared what she felt was on her heart. And today, a friend of mine, Drew Neal, was also talking about it, which has prompted me to create this video because I want to encourage you creatives, you innovators, people that are advancing technology not just the arts but technology and business right now that there is a new renaissance that is emerging right now that we have not seen on the earth and it is because of what is happening right now how do I know this well if I look back into history and if I have a look at the renaissance the first time a renaissance occurred I was actually amazed at what I found. I want to share some of the things with you and the comparisons that I'm sensing in this season. The first thing is the Renaissance actually came out of what? The Black Plague. There was a pandemic across the earth and because of that, people had to find new ways to earn an income because the old ways were not working anymore. And guess where the Black Plague hit the hardest and first? It was Italy. So artists started to emerge out of that season and I believe the same is going to happen. I actually believe Italy is again going to be at the forefront of a new surge of creativity that's going to take place and the world is going to follow. And what happened was these people started creating art and they became a very, very rich nation and their culture, as you know, became beautiful. To this day, it has echoed through the centuries. And I feel that the same thing is about to happen, that in great tragedy, in great pandemic, there is gonna be songs, there are gonna be songs that are released and sounds and art and dance that is going to be like something we have not seen before. Even now you may notice there is much more people online right now posting their songs, posting their creative expressions. This is just the beginning. This is like the droplets of what is about to come. The other thing I noticed about the Renaissance was that it was the priests that were going into people's homes. Now, this is an interesting thought. It was the priests that were going into people's homes to, to read people their last rites. And a lot of these priests, unfortunately, because they were, um, uh, they were exposed to the Black Plague, a lot of priests died, a lot of priests. But I think more than any other industry, priests were dying. Now, why am I saying that? I'm not saying that pastors and leaders are gonna die, but what actually happened because of that was that there was a lack of leaders and a lack of pastoral care in the church at the time so what did they do they had to raise people up really really quickly and because of that there was a lack of training in this new era of priests and then because of that the outworking of that was that um, the church corruption started to seep into the church and the result of that is what I want to talk about and that was people started to think for themselves they started to really question why they believed what they believed because they'd been taught for so long in um, in peaceful times who God was and they just believed it for themselves but as corruption entered the church they started to go well who who is God really what about science and technology? And they started to become a, uh, a people that started to think for themselves. Now, I don't believe we're going to see corruption in the church, but one thing I do think is happening is there is a reset going on. I think that the church is getting a shake up right now, the beautiful bride of Jesus, and I don't say this in a negative way, but God cares and loves about us so much. He is not allowing corruption to seep in in this season. He is shaking all of us up even the pure of heart, he's saying, hey, why do you do what you do? What is the purpose of why we create? What is the purpose of our church gathering? So I feel like during this season, just like in the Renaissance, there is a shakeup that is happening in the church that is exciting and it is going to propel us into a season of unprecedented growth and 
of supernatural signs and the miraculous. I am so excited about that. What if a song could release healing? What if a dance could break cancer over somebody's body? That is going to happen even more so in this season. I'm just going to go to my notes because I wrote some more notes here. Well, the final thing that I just want to say was that I believe this reset is going to take place and I, I felt like there needed to be a response of what we can do at this time because it's not enough for me to share all these amazing things and how exciting we can be during this season. I actually think we need to think about what is our response in this season. I want to go to my notes to tell you this is what I felt. I felt like the Lord say it is our role as creative innovators to release peace and life through your creativity. So in everything you are writing, let your response not be to fear or to pain right now. Now, I know that there is a space for the uh, the melancholy. I know that there is a place for those heartfelt messages where you're feeling things that break you. But I feel like in this season as God artists, as people that are at the forefront of this battle, your role is to release peace and healing right now and so that needs to be at the forefront of what we are creating and I also just felt like we need to pray and I think prayer looks really different for a creative person I think prayer can be sitting at a piano and just singing out something prophetically that no one will ever hear it might mean going on a walk and just declaring peace and life as ideas and thoughts come to you and the Holy Spirit reveals what you need to pray for it might even be if you have somebody that you know that is struggling with COVID-19 you're declaring peace and life over them by writing a poem or by declaring peace and life in in a different form of prayer than you have imagined previously. Again, this is where the innovation is not just taking place where the world can see it, but it's an innovation that's taking place in our hearts, in how we respond in prayer and intercession in what the Holy Spirit is revealing to us. And finally, I felt like we need to spend time thinking of others and how we can serve them. We need to spend time thinking of others and how we can serve them. What happens in a pandemic, although we've never seen something on a global scale, it's very easy for us to minimise it to what is happening to our family, what is happening to us. I mean, you know, the lack of toilet rolls in the supermarket is a perfect example. But what would it look like in this season if we started thinking about others and how to serve them? This does not mean we're neglecting our family it actually means the opposite. I think that we are connected to society more than we anticipate or realize. And when we start to only think about our own peace in the world, our P-I-E-C-E, our own peace in the world, we are losing the value of love that Christ has for others whether they know him or not. So the three ways that we can respond as there is a reset coming, a new renaissance coming is to release peace and life through your creativity, to pray creatively, and to spend time thinking of others and how we can serve them. I hope that's a blessing to you. I am excited. I grieve with those who grieve. I stand and I be smart. I'm not being silly, you know, I'm, I, I, but I believe that a new renaissance is coming and you and I are a part of it. I hope that blesses you.